She has been described as cat-like, sensual, tempestuous, and intoxicating. A breakthrough black model who defined a new standard of beauty and sexuality, stalking the catwalk from New York to Paris to Milan. In the late 1980s, Naomi Campbell exploded onto the fashion scene, creating an aura of the demanding diva with serious attitude. With that body, those legs, and this face, it was an image that worked. For the last 15 years, Campbell has embodied the essence of the supermodel, appearing on hundreds of magazine covers, commanding extraordinary fees for her services. Definitely. What time do I start tomorrow so I can go to the gym? But her reputation as pampered and self-centered has also commanded attention, as well as her legendary temper, which has recently gotten her into trouble, creating headlines she would rather forget. I do actually like being... This week, from... Naomi Campbell agreed to discuss her controversial behavior, which almost everyone who knows her seems to describe with one word. Naomi, I have never, ever started an interview this way. But you know that people call you a bitch. Yeah. And you don't mind. Um, no, I do mind. Um, I think that for me, a woman that's in control of her work or makes decisions or is very opinionated is called a bitch. And I think that a man, when he's like that, is called nothing. It's fine. But, um, I mean, being a bitch for me, if that's what people want to think of me as, has protected me in so many ways. Tell me how. I've never had any of that stuff where you hear of young girls and guys come up to them and giving them drugs or, you know, I've never had the sleazy side of what people think there is in modeling. I've never had that because... I guess I would put on a look like, don't you come near me. Do you deliberately try to be controversial? No, but I go on my instinct. But if someone said, oh, Naomi Campbell, she's so sweet, she's so nice. No, I don't want to be known as, as the sweet and nice girl. I find sweet and nice a little boring. <laughs> Naomi Campbell grew up on the tough streets of South London. Before she was even born, her father left, and her mother, off and away, worked tirelessly to put her daughter in prestigious stage schools to study singing, drama, and ballet. It was, she says, a very lonely and anxious time. There's a lot of issues that I have from childhood. Tell me about that. Well, for instance, not knowing, not knowing your father, not seeing your mother, that brings up a lot of, it manifests, manifests a lot of, Feelings, one anger. of those feelings, absolutely anger. But I think that's a really normal thing, and I mean, I didn't, I've not always displayed my anger in the appropriate or time. It's always been in the inappropriate time, but um, it's a manifestation of a deeper issue. I think anger, and that for me, I think, is based on insecurity, self-esteem, and loneliness, and um, being abandoned. Being abandoned. That's what I mean. That's what my core issues are: abandonment. And rejection and um, and that puts me in a real vulnerable space and everyone thinks oh Naomi's a really tough girl and really strong but that's what I want to appear to people to be like because I fear that if I don't they're gonna just walk all over me if they really knew how I was so in a way you're going to strike out before someone strikes you yeah I guess so when you were a kid did you hit other kids I used to get hit a lot you because I was extremely thin, yeah. and I used to get called all sorts of names. Names of color was always it's typical, and then bones and olive oil. And I remember once a little boy hit me in my stomach, threw stones at me, and I have to say I fought back. You hit back? Yeah, because I wasn't going to run home like, oh, the little boy hit me, and what did you do? I hit back. That was my instinct. The angry child blossomed into a beautiful teenager who at 15 was discovered by a modeling agency and became one of the few black models to pierce the fashion mainstream. In fact, she was the first black model to appear on French Vogue and other European magazines. Then she conquered America. What do you think it is about you that made fashion editors say, I must have that girl? Being independent, I do what I feel like doing and how I want to do. <laughs> Wild? Untamed? I didn't know any other way. That was... I didn't have any other examples, so I did what I thought was that was what I thought it was right. And it projected itself on the page. I think so.
In the early 1990s, Campbell, along with models Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista, and others, became supermodels, achieving enormous fame. Beyond the runway, Campbell has been everywhere, in movies. What are you doing? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. That, that, no, I'm sorry. I have a pen in my mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. And in music videos. For years, her high-octane lifestyle has fueled the tabloid press, as it followed her close relationships with men like Mike Tyson and Robert De Niro. But she has another side. Uh, it's a great uh, honor to have such an outstanding model. I really love you. Nelson Mandela has called her his honorary granddaughter for her charitable work in South Africa. So in many ways, Campbell is a bundle of contradictions. You pose very often in the nude. I've seen some beautiful pictures of you in the nude. You, now, you just shut up. <laughs> Do you have any inhibitions? Um, well, Why did you just shut up when I said that? No one would believe it because I posed for Playboy recently, but I do. I do have inhibitions, and that took me eight years to say yes to Playboy. I mean, I don't think being in the nude is vulgar at all if it's done in an artful way. She's about breaking the mold. She's about changing the rules and the standards of what beauty is supposed to be. We heard so much about Campbell being difficult that we went to Vogue fashion editor Andre Leon Talley to get the truth. Her reputation in the fashion world is that she is fabulous when she's fabulous, and that don't, if Naomi suddenly doesn't show up, you've just got to eat crow and hope that the next time she will show up and be in a better mood. You have a reputation for being notoriously late. Okay. Now, I had to, right. Well, today, <laughs> I like you, and you and I have, have you know, we're, we're getting was along just fine. An hour and 20 minutes. Oh, dear. Well, I was on another job. Mm, so was I. <laughs> okay, but well, you, I apologize okay. for Pussy. But you are very often late. Is, what's that about? Is that insecurity? Is that a power trip? What is it? It's just a fault and a defect that has to be put right, and I am trying to put it right. It's something that I think is very bad and ill-mannered, and it's not something I'm proud of. But as I said, I am progressing and putting it right. I forgive you then, okay. Thank you very All much. Right. Just don't let it happen again. Okay. Right? <laughs> always a little bit of a smile. But it's not just Campbell's tardiness, but her notorious outbursts that have most troubled the fashion world. One can see a glimpse of her anger in this 1998 VH1 documentary. You're on the right side. Then in Toronto that same year, Campbell went a step too far. Two years ago in 1998, a woman who worked as your assistant for nine days in Canada charged you with assault. Mm -hmm. And you know, she said you grabbed her by the throat to hit her with a phone. She uh, ran out of the room with her face bleeding and she filed criminal charges. Mm -hmm. Do you know why you lashed out at her? Do you understand well, it? Well, I didn't touch her body. I just threw the phone. Well, okay. But that's pretty strong anger. It's a definite strong anger and something that I've learned from. You pled a guilty to assault? Yes, I did. Okay. Because I threw the phone and I admit that. Okay. And I'm not going to say I didn't. I've never said I haven't. Okay. So that was real That was anger. real anger, yeah. Okay. Then you spent a month in a rehab clinic. Is that what I have read? A clinic um, that tried to help you control your anger? I went away to a place that was to take care of myself totally, not just focusing on anger. At the time, I had a great public life of what it may seem. I've got everything a girl could want. I travel the world. I'm very fortunate. Yes, I know I'm very fortunate, but the worst thing about all of that is you can still be unhappy. And I was really unhappy. And I needed to go away. And it was a big fearful thing for me to take the time off work and think, God, I'm missing something. And, um, but I, I did that because I realized the people that really loved me, I was going to lose if I didn't find out what was making me do the things I did. Have you found out now? Can you control the anger? Um, I'm progressing with my anger, as I know that it now comes from a deeper issue, and I know where it comes from. And, um, 
I mean, I've got a case that you're going to mention uh, now. Yes, you know. You know, and it's, you know, um, I'm making you cry, and everybody says I make everybody cry. No, so she <laughs> really makes you cry. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I'm just trying to really clear up these right things on. that have been said. Has Campbell really learned to control her anger, which she says goes all the way back to her childhood? Just last week, British and American press reported a second incident in which another former employee claimed Campbell assaulted her. She just got hold of me by my shoulders, by the upper part of my body, and threw me into the back of the lift wall. She tried to extort money from me a couple months ago, and I said no, and um, blackmail. And she said, I'm going to go to the press. And she did, and she went to the press with a story that never happened. She I... said that you hurled her against the wall because she wouldn't lie about a relationship you were having. Exactly. You never did this? No, I had four witnesses, which have all given their statements. And... She went to a hospital, and she was bruised. Well, since this today, there's been progress in my defense, which I was really happy about, which I can't say. And the whole thing was based on money. You did not strike her, I know, you did no. not push her against a wall? No, it didn't <laughs> happen, no. So now I have more of a handle on it, and I'm moving forward, and I'm getting better day by day. So you can be angry, but you don't necessarily have telephones? No, exactly. Campbell has just celebrated her 30th birthday, and at a time when teenagers seem to dominate the modeling world, Naomi still has no trouble getting jobs. Now she's become a businesswoman. She's just launched her own line of perfume in America. The name of her perfume? What else? Naomi Campbell. Naomi, do you think that in five years people will still be saying, she's a bitch? I hope so. <laughs> I hope they do. <laughs> I'm going to be remembered for something. I'm going to be remembered for being a bitch. But a hard-working bitch. And a loyal bitch. <laughs>